Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving an equation. What kind of equation? It's a rational equation. z to the power 7 minus 1 divided by z minus 1 is equal to 0. This may look like a heptic septic equation which is 7th degree but we're dividing z to the 7th by z so it's going to end up being hexic. Uh, it's going to be a little hectic so forgive me for that and I'll be presenting two methods. Okay, let's start with the first one. So we have this weird equation, some polynomial divided by another polynomial, right? And it's equal to zero. So why not divide these polynomials? Now to keep a long story short, z to the seventh minus one can be factored. It's the difference of two seventh powers. And if you factor it, one of the factors will be z minus one, which shouldn't be a surprise, right? It's at the bottom. And then the other factor can be formed very easily, especially when the first term is has a minus sign, we're going to start with the highest power of z available, which is z to the 6 in this case, because when you multiply these two things, you get z to the 7th. And now we'll continue with uh, powers of z. We're going to reduce them every time, but they're all going to be plus signs, so it's fairly easy to do, okay? z cubed, z squared, z plus 1. There's going to be 7 terms, right? And when you expand it, if you distribute, a lot of th things are going to cancel out, and you're going to end up with this. Make sense? Okay, that explains the factoring. So now, when we factor the numerator and divide by the denominator, z minus 1 is going to cancel out. Under one condition, though, z minus 1 should not equal 0. That's, that's not acceptable, right? Obviously. So z should not be 1. So at the end, we need to make sure that whatever you do, z should not equal 1. Pay attention to that, okay? So we're going to set this equal to 0 then. So we have our equation, new hexic hectic equation, z to the fifth, z to the fourth, z to the third, z to the second, z and one. Awesome. <laughs> a really long equation, right? And there's no formula. Remember, on my other channel in the video that I appeared today, I already said that there's no quintic formula. Is there a hexic formula? Nope, not at all. After five, starting with the fifth degree, unfortunately, there are no general solutions. In terms of elementary functions, okay, that's what I mean. Let me make that clear so people do not, you know. Um, anyways, you can still comment about it. I, I, it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm not offended. You can definitely comment because comments are good. Good and bad comments, okay, but try to stay positive as much as possible. Anyways, this is uh, our equation. Let's go ahead and solve it in two ways, shall we? So the first thing I'm going to do is Look at it from an interesting angle, because this is a symmetric equation. Is that the right word? Symmetric means that when you look at the terms that are the same distance from the center, they happen to have the same coefficient. And in this case, they're all ones, by the way, but that doesn't matter. They could be twos and twos, threes and threes, whatever. But we have the symmetry. And z cubed sits at the center, because there are seven terms. There's something in the middle. Remember? The median from statistics. Yeah, I don't like statistics, by the way. A lot of people ask me, like, okay, I don't like that. Anyways, what can I do, right? I mean, there's certain things that you like and there's certain things you don't like. Anyways, so z cubed is in the middle. <laughs> okay, what am I saying? Z cubed is in the middle. So we're going to divide everything by z cubed because z cubed rules. All right. When you divide z to the sixth by z cubed, you get z to the third. When you divide this by z cubed, you get z squared. You get the idea? You get z, you get one. And then you're going to start getting the negative powers or fractions, right? 1 over z, and then 1 over z squared, and finally 1 over z cubed. Remember, we talked about some type of symmetry. Obviously, z should not be 0, but we do know that, come on, z cannot be 0, right? There's no way, because it's not going to work. 1 does not equal 0, at least, I mean, at, as far as I know. 0 to the power 0 might equal 1, but 1 does not equal 0 for sure, right? And I made a video about this, you can definitely... Go ahead and check that out. But that's a different story. So now, here's what we're going to do. We spoke about symmetry. So I'm going to take this and pair up with that. I'm going to take this and pair up with that. I'm going to take this and pair up with that. And guess what? One is going to be left alone. Because one is a constant. It can just stay like that. Too bad. So now we get z cubed plus 1 over z cubed. Plus z squared plus 1 over z squared. Plus z plus 1 over z 
plus one equals zero. You, you, are you getting what I'm getting yet? Good. Now here's the thing. This is really cool. That's really cool. And this is just awesome. You know what we can do? All of these can be expressed in terms of z plus one over z. Obviously this guy over here. So now for example, if you remember the formula for a cubed plus b cubed, z cubed plus one over z cubed can be written as z plus one over z cubed. Then from that I need to subtract three a b times a plus b, but a b or z times one over z is one. So it's just gonna be three times z plus one over z, which is another identity for this sum right here, right? And a z squared plus one over z squared can be written as z plus one over z quantity squared minus two, because again, two ab is gonna be two because ab is one. And then this guy over here, uh oh, we're running out of space, make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, here we go. You get the idea? Now, doesn't this call for substitution? And today's theme is substitution because substitution is awesome, right? We used it at um, CyberMath too. Okay, anyways promoting back and forth. So now this is a T, because I use T again, one more time, but T is awesome. And this is T as well, right? So we have a lot of T's. <laughs> T cubed minus three T plus T squared minus two plus T plus one equals zero. Awesome, this is much simpler. Now arrange the terms um, and you get a cubic, which is better than a quartic obviously, right? And you end up with this cubic. and we could probably solve it, right? I mean, this cubic can be solved. Can, can we solve this? Yes, you can solve it, and there's a formula, but it's kind of painful. I mean, you can try to solve it, and you're going to get some solutions. I don't know if I included the solutions here because I was kind of looking at the solutions at some point. I think they're going to appear at the end. Anyways, let's finish the second method, and then I'll show you what I have. I don't know what I have. I don't even have. I forgot. So let's now continue with the second method. I know this is incomplete but we'll hopefully get back to it. So for my second method, I want to use something interesting. What do I mean by that? I just want to use the idea that, well, why should I get myself in trouble by dividing and getting a really long polynomial? I could just focus on the numerator, right? Because if a over b is zero, what does that mean? It means that a is equal to zero, right? But not only that, it also means b does not equal zero because zero divided by zero is not zero. Again, zero to the power of zero is a different thing. Don't worry about that, but this is definitely true, right? Any opposition? Please let us know in the comment section. We'll discuss. Now, from here, we basically get z to the seventh minus one is equal to, sorry. Oh, by the way, sorry for my z because it looks like a seven, but that's how I make my z. I don't make my z's like this because they look like a two. I know two is a little different when you make it like this, but when you make it like this, it looks like a z anyways. To keep a long story short, this is my z and this is my seven. That's a European seven because I don't like this either. Anyways, long story. Now, set this equal to zero and make sure z minus one does not equal zero, which means z should not equal one. Didn't we already talk about it? Yes, okay, great. And with my previous solution, we didn't check it because we didn't even get there. So what does that mean though, z to the seven equals one? Wait a minute, isn't this channel all about complex numbers? So we should use the complexification of one kind of sounds like tomorrow we shall see the purification. I, it's just a line from Braveheart. Anyways, that's just an awesome movie, uh, movie commercials. So now we're going to uh, replace one with something awesome. e to the power 2 pi n i, where n is an integer. Thanks to Euler. It's just an awesome, awesome formula because Euler is the awesomest. Now, we want to find z from here, so we should take or raise both sides to the power one over seven, which means we should find the seventh roots, but there's seven of them because co a complex number has seven seventh roots. Makes sense? Because it has n nth roots. So we're gonna do the following. Raise both sides to the power one over seven. Z is gonna be e to the power two pi n i divided by seven. It's that easy because n is an integer and we can just change it. It's a variable, right? So n can be zero, one, to dot 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 all the way up to six and can be 13 as well but guess what it's a cycle you're gonna keep getting the same solutions there's only seven of them right wasn't that a hexic okay we'll get to it don't worry now i want to start with n equals zero because that's interesting okay i would normally start with six but i don't want to torture people a lot i'll torture you a little bit if n is equal to zero then we get z equals e to the power zero which is one Wait a minute. 
Didn't we just say z cannot equal one, right? Last time I checked, z wasn't one. Okay, okay, this is not acceptable. I mean, it came up, but this is not a solution. So we're gonna discard it and continue with n equals one as if nothing happened, right? If n is equal to one, we're gonna get z equals e to the power two pi i over seven. And what does this tell you? It tells you a complex number whose modulus is one and argument two pi over seven. Hmm. It's kind of like a heptagon some type of weird scenario with geometry, so on and so forth. And yes, you can go ahead and replace n with 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And for example, for 6, you're going to end up with z equals e to the power 2 pi 6i, which is 12 pi i over 7. And notice that 12 over 7 pi is still less than 2 pi. So we're still between 0 and 2 pi. And that's going to be the last solution. Can we find cosine pi over 7 and sine pi over 7? I don't think so. Last time I checked, we couldn't find it. So now let's go ahead and see what I have here for you. Ta-da! What is W? Okay, W is supposed to be the T in this case. Remember, we set Z plus 1 over Z equal to W. We didn't, but just pretend that we did. From here, you would get these three solutions because that was a cubic equation, wasn't it? I think it was cubic, right? Yes. So this was a cubic equation. So those are the roots of that cubic. Do you like it? And now those are really complicated, aren't they? But yes, uh, using the cubic formula, you can come up with them. And then good luck solving this equation because you have to set each W value to this and find the Z values from there. But guess what? The graph is much nicer. These are all the solutions, the seventh roots of unity. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time in another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.